Hello, everyone. Today on The Final Bar, I'm joined by Joe Duarte. He'll share with us some of the charts that are top of mind for him. Overall, sort of mixed messages from the market today with the NASDAQ higher, the Dow lower, the S&P really flat for the day, nestled right there in the middle. Overall, we've had a, an S&P 500 making new all-time highs, becoming overbought, and then in the last couple, couple of days, getting out of that overbought region, starting to cool off a little, bit, a little bit, but plenty of stocks still working. Ladies and gentlemen, this is The Final Bar. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's edition of The Final Bar. I'm your host, Dave Keller. I'm the Chief Market Strategist here at StockCharts.com in a very rainy Redmond, Washington. Thanks for joining us every weekday after the close as we focus on the market environment using the power of stock charts, using data visualization techniques to better understand market dynamics and focus on the message of supply and demand, fear and greed, euphoria and desperation, all those investor emotions that I would argue are reflected very, very clearly on the charts if you know what to look for. So overall, we sort of have this transition of sorts from a raging bull market phase. And, and while we're arguably still in that bull market phase, things cooled off a little bit in the last couple of days. But it's worth noting, as I was screening for new highs and new lows yesterday morning, still wasn't struggling to find stocks making new, uh, new uh, three-month highs. I wasn't struggling to find stocks making new three-month lows, although there aren't very many of them, and much less uh, about five to one in the race, in the uh, universe I look at, new highs to new lows, over uh, over 60 of them in the, in the U.S. sort of large mid-cap universe that I tend to pay attention to. We'll hit on some of those themes, particularly the material sector, with stocks like FCX doing just fine uh, today and, uh, and this week. We have great guests on the show. Wanted to point out uh, the best way to find the upcoming guests on Stock Charts TV is go to the Stock Charts TV page on stockcharts.com. And if you go down a little bit below the live stream, you'll see this little section called Upcoming Guests. It has all of our upcoming guests on all of our shows, not just on my show, but uh, other things like Your Daily Five, which Joe Duarte, uh, our guest today, is a frequent guest host on. Coming up on this show next week on Tuesday the 16th, we have Jesse Felder, uh, founder of the Felder Report. On Wednesday the 17th, Chaved Mirza from Canaccord Genuity in Toronto. Thursday of next week, we have Bruce Frazier, Wyckoff expert and investor investor education expert, I would say, uh, joining us next Thursday. The week after, we'll have the Thanksgiving holidays. So we'll be taking Wednesday, Thursday, Friday off, uh, but we should have a lot of fun that week, sort of setting the stage and uh, taking a step back and looking at the market movements over time. Also, as a reminder, uh, I have my next free webinar through market misbehavior coming up next week on Tuesday, the 16th, one o'clock Eastern called Small Cap Stocks, What why, when, and how. Small caps, if you look at the Russell 2000, just breaking out uh, in recent weeks for the first time in quite a long time. They've been sideways while the S&P and the NASDAQ have been going higher. Small caps largely had not been participating over the last six months, really starting to change a little bit. And I think that's a theme we want to focus on. Think about where the opportunities might lie in the small cap space. We'll talk about how to gain exposure to small caps, some of the different options you have, and what guideposts, what, uh, what signals to be looking for along the way. Go to marketmisbehavior.com slash small caps if you're interested in that free event next week. Let's continue on with today's market recap. So as I mentioned, overall, sort of a, a, a mixed bag today with the NASDAQ going up about a half a percent, the NASDAQ 100.3% higher, the uh, S&P 500 flat, the Dow down 0.4%. So this is a, a type of day that we've seen a lot uh, in, in recent months, but uh, recently not, not as much. Sort of everything's kind of been moving together, it's felt like. Mid caps and small caps actually performed uh, a little better today and were the strongest uh, performer. The small cap index actually was the best of the, uh, the, small, cap, the small list of, uh, of, of uh, equity indexes that we tracked. The VIX is back below 18. Bond markets closed today for the Veterans Day holiday. I want to certainly thank uh, all of our veterans for your commitment and your service. It's so very, very much appreciated. Um, so, uh, but, but again, I, if there's one thing to think about when you think about the bond markets, I, I would argue that the chart of the 10-year yield, if there's one chart to help you make sense of leadership themes between now and year end and going into the beginning of the next, uh, the next year, dollar sign TNX, 
arguably could be the most important uh, chart to track the interest rate environment and think about growth versus value and where you might see leadership emerge. Gold is having a quite a quite a decent day today. It's after yesterday distributing and, and a nice rally into the close. The GLD uh, spent most of the day, um, you really gapped up at the, at the open and remained fairly elevated up about half a percent. The chart of the GLD has really changed. We're going to look at that chart here in a few moments uh, because we've talked about the importance of some key resistance levels that have now been eclipsed. And I want to make sure we, uh, we focus a little bit of attention on there. Cryptocurrencies all over the place recently is my very technical way of describing the, uh, the environment with cryptocurrencies. But if you look at the two-day preview chart of Bitcoin, it's been feast or famine. And there have been periods of uh, acceleration to the upside with Bitcoin touching 69,000, uh, just over 24 hours to go, then plunging down to around 64,000, settling and spending most of the day around the 65,000 level. Certainly seems to me that the path of least resistance, largely speaking, for cryptocurrencies is higher. And you're seeing plenty of evidence of, uh, of upside momentum, but, uh, but certainly with a healthy dose of volatility. So if you enjoy volatility and uncertainty, you probably have a very happy home in uh, the cryptocurrency space. Let's look at a chart of the S&P 500, then we'll look at gold and uh, see what else we can get to to finish off today's market recap. <clears throat> so when I'm looking at the chart of the S&P 500, and we've taken a couple of days off from the show, apologies for that. We've uh, been under the weather and, uh, and, and good enough to do the show today, which I'm pretty excited about. I actually miss doing the show when we don't do it. It's, it's, it's part, how I mark my days now, my trading day is doing the, uh, the closing bell show uh, with all of you. So it's it's good to be doing it. And when I look at how the market has evolved so far this week, you know, you saw this rally last week uh, to hit 47,000. You saw the S&P 500 become overbought. And what we talked about one day on the show last week, I think it was Thursday or Friday, was we looked at a, 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 a historical uh, brief look at when the S&P had become overbought, particularly extremely overbought with an RSI above 80. And that is actually very, very rare. It's only happened three times since 2015, where the S&P has become extremely overbought. We didn't quite get there uh, last week. We were very, very close. And that's why we brought, that, brought up that example, because extreme overbought conditions tend to mean two things. Number one, you're pretty much ready for a, a brief pullback. And number two, overall, the long-term strength is pretty apparent because the upside momentum is so strong. We didn't quite get there. So now you're sort of in a garden variety overbought and now uh, you know coming out of that out of that condition. <clears throat> and so the key that you need to look for is just, uh, you know, key lines in the sand, right? And this is where I think looking at the final bar, the current price bar, looking to the left and seeing where we're at relative to some key support levels is, uh, is very, very prudent. So we became overbought, which means the upside is strong. We're out of that overbought region, which means we're pulling back a bit. So now you look left to the chart and see where we have key support levels. 45.50, I would argue, is really the first level and the main level to be paying attention to now. If we remain above that 4550 level, overall conditions are relatively strong. You still have an overall bullish environment. There's plenty of upside still to be had, and that is a brief pullback. That is a minor pullback of 150 points. That's three to four percent or so uh, before resetting for the next move higher. <clears throat> and if you look back over time, we've had a number of three to four percent pullbacks in 2021. All of those obviously have resolved uh, to the upside. So that's what I'd be looking for to see if that sort of pattern. Uh, would continue. If you would break 4550, I think that's where you have to take a deeper look at some key levels. And the 50 day moving average is not too far below that, <clears throat> excuse me, just below 4500. But you look to see if that holds. So those are your first two uh, levels to watch. As long as we remain above that trend is uh, overall, the, the, the trend is still very, very positive. We break that, then you have to start looking a little deeper. And I, I would argue the next level down is sort of that 4,300, 4,250 range. That's the uh, pullback in September and early October, clearly a, a, or a clearly defined level of support. You also have the 200 day moving average, not too far below that. And I think looking at potential support there would be a, would be a reasonable, reasonable next step. But 4550, the first line in the sand to pay attention to. The next chart we'll look at is the GLD. And this is a really important chart to, uh, to bring up. We've been talking about this chart for quite a while, and I've regularly brought it up just to demonstrate that it's still not bullish. And, and I did that just as a reminder that, you know, for me, a, a downtrend is lower lows and lower highs. An uptrend is when that pattern changed, when you start seeing higher lows and higher highs. And the problem we've had with the chart of the GLD, with the, with the chart of the gold spot, which is dollar sign GOLD on stock charts, uh, is you really haven't had that rotation higher. You've had consolidation. You've had a sideways range bound 
uh, chart, if not, you know, if not uh, sort of bias a little bit to the downside, but you really haven't had any sort of upside follow through. I think the most concerning uh, factor on the on the chart of the GLD is the fact that you've had a number of opportunities to break to new swing highs and you've been unable to follow through. We talked about that 170 to 172 range, and we've talked about this for, for a while now as, a, as being a level of resistance that we've been unable to eclipse. So that all has changed in the last couple of days. You now have seen gold get above its previous resistance level. So what we had talked about is the chart of gold is negative until proven otherwise. Until you get above 172, until you get an RSI that breaks above 60, that tells you that there's a, what I call a change of character. Something is different, something is new, some new input or some new uh, sentiment from investors has uh, convinced people that gold or particularly the GLD is worth more than $172 a share. And we're there. So now we have seen price break above resistance. We've seen the RSI get above 60, which is more in a bullish phase. Overall, I would argue this chart is now in a constructive uh, pattern. Jeff Huge was on the show not too long ago, maybe a month ago. I'm, I'm trying to remember when it was, uh, but we talked about gold and uh, he and I were chatting earlier today uh, to uh, to uh, celebrate, I guess, this rotation to the upside. So, you know, gold and gold stocks have been uh, just a, a rough place to be on a relative basis particular, but I might be looking for opportunities there to see, given the, the renewed strength in gold, given the fact that it's actually getting above resistance, are there opportunities to gain exposure there that you might have been avoiding for quite a while? We need to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back to today's guest, Joe Duarte. We'll see you in a minute. What if you could look beyond price and identify big moves in the market before they happen? That's why we created the Moxie Indicator Minutes. Hosted by me, T.G. Watkins of Simpler Trading, the creator of the Moxie Indicator. Each week, I'll provide you details about the indicator what it does and how it can work for you only on stock charts tv hello everyone welcome back to the final bar this is dave keller here at stockcharts.com it's so good to have you join us every weekday after the close we're going to get to today's guest joe duarte here in a few moments a couple quick announcements before we do so number one we love to hear your questions uh, our show a couple days a week is fueled by the final bar mailbag and questions all come from you, our viewers. Let us help you point you in the right direction uh, with uh, with technical analysis, with market history and with investor psychology. Our email is the best way to get your questions to us. The final bar at stockcharts.com. We're on Twitter at final bar SCTV. We're on YouTube. Just put a comment below the uh, stock charts video that you're watching. We'll gather all those questions and hope to answer yours in our next mailbag segment on Friday's show of this week. Also go to stockchartstv.com. That is our on-demand platform. You can see great shows like The Final Bar, like Your Daily Five, great guest appearances like uh, Joe Duarte and many others, and special events like The Pitch, our year in review coming up in December. So much great content every trading day. Go to stockchartstv.com. Use your email address to set up a free account or search on any of the app stores for Stock Charts TV On Demand. I want to welcome on today's guest joining us on the show once again, Joe Duarte. Joe's the author of Options Trading for Dummies, uh, just recently out in its fourth edition, and uh, founder of Joe Duarte in the Money Options.com. Joe, welcome back to the show. It's good to see you. Hey, it's great to be here, Dave. So we have an environment where the S and P has, uh, you know, been fairly resilient here. Uh, you know, re recovering from a September, September pullback, sort of uh, moving to the upside October into November, pulling back a little bit this week. But start us with the big picture. What are you seeing with stocks? Well, first thing I always look at is the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline line, and you know, as you can see by the uh, provided chart there, uh, it recently broke out, and uh, uh, I, I look at this. Uh, as a better gauge of where the market is going than looking at the major indices. So at this point, until proven otherwise, as I always say, this market looks like it wants to head higher. It's a great chart. And, and I was taught, you know, the most bullish thing the market can do is go up. And the 80 lines rotating to the upside, certainly confirming some broader strength. Now you have a, a, an individual stock idea they brought with us number two. This is waste management, ticker WM. What are you seeing here? Well, this is also one of those one of those sleeper stocks. You know, it's had a nice run for a while, but but now it's starting to look like it wants to break out again. And what I like about this stock more than anything else, it's that it's not just a waste management stock. It's becoming kind of a, a, a tech stock and, and more of a hybrid stock. 
uh, it's starting to, to use more automation uh, in order to, uh, uh, to make its plants more efficient. And, uh, and that's actually becoming a, a recycling play as well as, as the uh, post-COVID dynamic uh, expands and, and evolves. So th there's a lot more to waste management than the blue trash trucks driving down the street. <laughs> Uh, it's a great, great point. It's a good, good chart. And overall, the accumulation distribution, yeah. the unbalanced volume, certainly confirming that, uh, that uptrend there. When you're, you know, when you're looking at a chart, we have a, a, a minute or two for questions, Joe. When you're looking at the chart of waste management, what would be a concerning, like, what would tell you that it's no longer risk on you need to get defensive? When you're looking at a chart like this, is it some of the like accumulation distribution starting to not confirm an upside? Would it be breaking a particular level? Or how would you manage risk looking at a, in an example like this one? Okay, so accumulation distribution uh, is a great indicator, but I use it more as an indication of what short sellers are doing. So if mm. you look at, at uh, like September when it's heading down and on balance volume is moving up, that tells me that there's a lot of short sellers trying to come in, but the smart money is actually moving in when the stock is going down because mm. on balance volume is moving up. So it, it, anything that reverses that pattern where, where accumulation distribution falls and on balance volume follows that would tell me that there's there's a little bit more of a problem. Also, support and, and uh, you know breakdown of a key support level as well. When you're seeing the overall uh, S and P, the, the market conditions, Joe, as you mentioned, uh, you know rightly so. I think showing a lot of strength, and you're seeing a lot of names, you know, breaking out recently. When you're thinking between now and your end, if we continue to see strength, where are you looking opportunistically? Uh, you know, besides a name like waste management, a particular sectors or themes that you think are, are most uh, uh, appropriate for investors to focus on here? I think the most important sector in, in the market at this point is any company that offers an online platform for uh, systems developments and, and or anything that has to do with that. If they take it to the cloud and make it something that people can use to run their business, you know, semiconductor design, uh, uh, you know, e-commerce, anything that has to do with the cloud and makes everything uh, a business useful, I think that's the place to be. Oh, that's a great point. Um, you know, I'm wondering as we, uh, you know, just one last question, if we could, you know, a lot of focus this week on the Fed, on interest rates, and just this prospect of rates going higher and what that might mean. Um, how are you trying to think of that rel relative to uh, your charge? Where does that fit into your, uh, your focus? Is that a a theme to be thought of along with these, uh, any others, or is that more of a measure of, of risk for you, of uh, inflationary pressures? Um, you know, where does that fit into your thinking uh, going forward? It's the number one thing. I mean, as you yeah. well know, the number one market adage is don't fight the Fed. So <laughs> when the Fed does what it's going to do and you start seeing the market uh, struggle, that's probably a signal that things are going to start, um, you know, getting troublesome in the future. It's tough. I, when I think about the Fed going forward and what they're going to try to do, it feels like a slow motion train wreck that you're seeing starting to emerge. I'm, I'm afraid that's going to happen, but for now, we'll rely on the strength of stocks. Joe, it's great to catch up with you. Listen, thanks for bringing some charts with you and, uh, and being willing to answer my, answer my questions. Stay safe and be well down there in Texas. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you, Dave. That's Joe Duarte. Joe's the author of uh, Options Trading for Dummies, recently out in its fourth edition. You can find more information about Joe at joeduarteinthemoneyoptions.com. He literally wrote the book on how to, uh, how to think about options trading and uh, really well done, by the way. Uh, you know, and I, and I thought his, I, I think uh, the charts that he shared with us are really, really helpful. That first one is what's most important. What I love when he, when he sent me the charts we were going we to review, and we talked about them a little bit before the show, it was sort of starting with, the first look, which is the cumulative advanced decline line, right? Forget about all the narratives, all the ideas, all the could and should happen type of uh, type of discussion. The chart of the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline line is breaking out. And overall, that means the conditions are fairly strong. When that changes, that tells you need to be concerned. It's not changing today for sure. Let's continue on with our next segment called Getting Sentimental. So what we like to do on, on uh, Thursdays, is review some of the sentiment data. A lot of the sentiment data is updated Wednesday into Thursday. I'm going to do something a little bit different today, only because we haven't had the show earlier this week. Uh, because of the congestion, as you can tell, I'm still struggling with a little bit, and I apologize for that. I'm doing my best. Uh, but I did want to touch on breadth just a little bit, because as uh, as Joe mentioned, the breadth overall is, is strong, and I'll share with you some of the breadth charts that are confirming for me what Joe just shared with you. I think, I think he's, I, 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 it's hard to disagree with his point about overall strength. You know, for me, I think about the advanced decline lines on different cap tiers and look to see if the advanced decline lines are able to confirm the move 
that you see in the S&P 500. So this is part of the Mindful Investor Live chart list. We'll spend some time on this again tomorrow. But the main chart that I would use to measure breadth is looking at the advanced decline lines for the New York Stock Exchange, then large caps, mid caps, and small caps. All four of these, as you can see, have now broken above their September swing high. So while the S&P rotated above its high from September, all four of these have done the same. That's why they're color-coded green for me, which tells me overall the market's in a, uh, in a position of strength and the path of least resistance remains positive. This chart is an interesting one, and there are two takeaways from this one I'll share with you. This is the S&P 500 and the percent of S&P members trading above their 200-day moving average, currently around 77%. And the uh, stocks percent of stocks above their 50-day moving average, which is just below 75%. This has been steadily increasing, the series at the bottom. It was around 25% at the end of September. Now, about six weeks later, it's at 75%. So what that means is literally half of the S&P 500 over the last six weeks was before uh, below its 50-day moving average, now has rotated above its 50-day moving average. For half of the S&P uh, index, you've seen that positive rotation. So when you think about upside participation, you think about broad advances versus narrow advances. This chart rotating from 25 to 75% in six weeks tells me it is a broad advance with a lot of individual names that are rotating higher. And it's worth noting, you know, when I ran uh, a screen of stocks making new three uh, week, uh, excuse me, three month highs, I did that yesterday morning for my market misbehavior premium members. And uh, it was interesting, you usually have plenty of names in technology and consumer discretionary, which you did again this time, but noteworthy were an increased number in industrials and in materials. And materials are up pretty good today. If we have time, we'll look at a material stock or two. FCX is a good example that comes to mind, but I'm, I'm not struggling to find names that are uh, in fairly constructive technical patterns. You know, one potential area of concern would be this chart. This is the uh, S&P members making new highs and new lows at the uh, bottom, 52-week uh, new highs and lows, that is. You can see this week so far, it's actually started to taper off quite a bit. And so looking, um, looking to see if you can see a reemergence of strength, a stronger move in, uh, in some of that breadth data would be, uh, would be encouraging, and looking to see if you continue to see an expansion in new 52-week highs. That's what I'd be looking for on that particular chart. Let's get to the sentiment. So I did want to touch on just a couple examples of, uh, of breadth charts to share with you what's going on. But let's focus a little bit for the remainder of this segment on the sentiment picture. The VIX overall has been range bound for the last six months. On the lower end, you have around 15. On the upper end, it's been around 20 to 25, to be honest with you. And it's been a fairly wide range on the upside. And it's a good reminder that the VIX is not necessarily bound. A lot of times we think of particular levels on the VIX as having meaning. I tend to shy away from that, broadly speaking, because I think volatility regimes can change. So if you look at 2021, if you look at 2020, and if you look at 2019, the range in the VIX actually very, very different in each one of those three uh, years, right? So 2021 has been unique relative to the last year, two years, uh, 2020 with a fairly elevated volatility, 2019 with a relatively muted volatility. And where we're at right now is sort of at the upper end of the VIX range in 2019. So having said that, we're about mid-range to where we've been for the last six months. So during this slow and steady decline, or excuse me, slow and steady ascent of stocks as the S&P has made generally new highs with the brief hiatus there in uh, September, but then resuming its uptrend October into where we're at now. The VIX overall has been between 15 and the, uh, and the low 20s. Right now we're mid-range, which tells you volatility is about normal for what it's been in the last six months. No real extremes one way or the other, but we are coming off a fairly low level for that last six months. When you look at the AAII survey, it's worth highlighting this because the bullish sentiment is very near what I would consider euphoric levels. The AAII bullish reading is how many, uh, what percent of the respondents in this survey of individual investors say they're bullish versus bearish or neutral for the next six months for stocks. This is at 48% in, uh, in early September, for example, we were around, around 20, 25% uh, if that, and now we're back up to 48% uh, a couple months later. This is uh, above 50% is a euphoric reading, which means uh, what I would describe as excessive bullishness. And while that on its own is not a sign of, uh, of market exhaustion, you can tell, obviously, the previous times that we've had a, uh, a bullish reading above 50%, it's not necessarily meant that the uh, market has topped out. In some uh, cases, uh, to the contrary, the market's actually moved much higher. But it does tell you 
we're starting to show conditions that we have seen at previous uh, at the end of or the latter stages of previous bull market phases. So what it tells me is to be diligent and to look for signs in price to confirm that the euphoric bullishness is being is materializing and 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 is being reflected and the price of the market's uh, starting to rotate lower. So we're very, very close to that. I'd be looking next week to see if we get above 50%, uh, which would be in a, a level of concern. The uh, excuse me, the name exposure index, which looks at active money managers, remains above 100%, which is certainly elevated. That is in the euphoric range. Over 100% means money managers in this particular survey are net leverage long. They're over 100% allocated to equities, and that tends to uh, line up with uh, with the later stages of previous bull market cycles. And again, to me, it's not a particular signal on its own. It tells me to be wary and to look for confirmation as uh, as price would start to break down. So again, S and P forty five fifty would be a level I'd be looking at in the short term. The Rydex flows remain incredibly low. Uh, this is plotted inversely on this chart to show an extreme low level, but basically the lowest level in the history of the data series, suggesting individual investors using the Rydex funds are essentially all in bullish. That is our segment on getting sentimental. We need to wrap to today's show. Go to the three and three, three charts in three minutes. Here we go. Chart number one is the chart of gold. We're using the GLD here. GLD getting above 172. Monumental may be too strong of a word, but not too much. Uh, I've been pounding the table on how gold is just a not, not a great chart because the fact that it's been sideways while so many other things, particularly other risk assets, have been going higher, equities and uh, in particular uh, sectors within the, uh, within the equity space. Now, all of a sudden, that's changed. And this week, you've seen a, uh, a change of character. And that, that is what, how I describe a chart that has looked a particular way for some period of time. And now something's different, right? Something has evolved. Something has changed. This happens when a chart breaks out of resistance, breaks below support, breaks out of a trading range. Something different happens. And so the RSI had been firmly in the bearish range for about uh, five months, has now broken out. Resistance that had held for months and months with the numerous failed attempts to eclipse it has now been eclipsed. Gold overall looks way more constructive at this point. I think upside uh, for the GLD, I'd be looking at the uh, the early June highs and just above there around 180, sort of the 178, 180 range, which would take us back to the June highs and the next Fibonacci resistance level. I think there's upside uh, to there. And certainly that is uh, often thought of as a hedge for inflation and, and, and certainly inflation has felt less transitory and more confirmed uh, here in the last week. Chart number two, based on the strength of gold, the material sector doing very, very well. We did not have a chance to look at the chart of the FCX, uh, but if you, if you haven't, take a look at that one. That's a chart that's uh, rotating uh, nicely to the upside, sort of uh, evolving, I would argue, from a distribution phase to an accumulation phase. I like sectors that are breaking to new highs and where the relative strength is improving. The material sector currently is demonstrating both of those facts. Near to making a new three-month high, and that, that's what I'd be looking for to see if it can get above the uh, the relative peak that was set in early August. That would confirm this breakout that you're seeing and suggest more of an allocation, at the very least, more of an attention to the material sector, which is one I think a lot of people have written off for justifiable reasons, given the weakness in, the, in materials uh, and commodities in particular. Finally, a good example of a chart in the distribution phase, I so often focus on buy ideas, and that's just a natural part of equity investing. There are always so many names that you can identify that are breaking out. And I know this from my time at Fidelity. It was way more fun to walk around the halls pitching a stock breaking out and pitching a stock with upside potential versus going around and telling people that one of their positions was not a great one. Talk about not being a popular person on the equity floor was walking around telling people that a big holding we had needed to be sold, uh, but you had to do it. That was part of the, uh, the role was to lean away from uh, what's not working. A chart like Activision is a good example of a chart in distribution phase. And the things that I would highlight there are number one, uh, continued fails at support, right? There have been a number of times where Activision has made a new swing low and bounced higher and would have an opportunity to hold those previous lows, but it's failed. And you've seen how uh, we've continued to make lower highs and lower lows. It's below two downward sloping moving averages. It made it below its most uh, or the uh, final Fibonacci support level, which tells you from a technical perspective, there's nothing really below there in terms of potential support levels. Something like this does not look interesting till the relative strength turns higher. Folks, that's our show for today. A special thank you to Joe Duarte joining us from Texas, sharing his thoughts on the overall market and with a particular stock example for us. For StockCharts.com in Redmond, Washington, I'm Dave Keller. Be safe, be well, have a great night.
Hey, Grayson Rhodes here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.